Hey guys, it's Wade again. I know it's been a long time. I wanted to cover the bottom of my fuselage, both the paint and the structure, before I press forward with flipping this bird up and over and getting on to the other side. As you can see, the strakes are complete as far as the bottom strake skins. The paint is this Epiphanis two-part polyurethane boat paint. It looks phenomenal from about six to ten feet away. Any closer you can start seeing some issues. And I'll go over some of these items. I'll also show both the gear and the landing brake operation. And then I'll cover the Ram Air Scoop, which is probably the most significant difference between my bird and some of the others. Uh, it's a little bit different than the old P51 Scoop. First off, the paint, I'll be switching to this Nason, however you say it, that's a, a sprayable paint versus the roll-on or brush-on two-part polyurethane, as I noted, the Epiphanis boat paint. Again, this is fine, I've determined for the bottom of the aircraft, but for the top, it's just not going to cut it as far as the Epiphanis, so I'm going to start spraying from here on out pretty much everything on this bird. Uh, at first I was in a quagmire of what to do as far as redoing it. Again, it looks great as far as from a distance, but you get up close and you can see a lot of different issues with it. But So I'm just going to leave it and press forward and get this bird in the air ASAP. I will make one little interesting note as far as trivia. The color scheme on this bird is from the black billed magpie that was flying around. Here's a shot of those. Back when my aircraft, as far as the build, looked like this. The color blue, I originally wanted a little bit darker, but I compromised, and I don't think it's bad at all as far as the compromise. I really do love this blue right here, but I did want it a little a little darker originally. As far as the strakes, you can see on each side I will have the guy in back, gal in back, strake windows, and then on the right or starboard side I'll have a NACA scoop that goes into uh, an eye vent for uh, direct fresh air for the back seater. And these are the Featherlight leading edge strakes as far as the kit. And so they're, uh, it's pretty nice as far, it's, it's, they're difficult getting on originally, kind of winding everything up, but once you got them on, it makes for a nice clean leading edge strake and you don't really have to mess around with any type of hand shaping the leading edge or anything like that. Strakes are pretty much done. As you can see, I am doing kind of a compartmentalized painting here because I wanted to finish off the bottom of the plane before I press forward. I did install the bottom cowling. When the wings were on back here, you can see the flange. Here's a shot of the cowling installed. I am using the Mike Melville Featherlight produced carbon fiber cowlings that have the Ronenberg armpit intake scoops, just like the Barracoot integrated. As far as the gear, these are standard landing gears with the Eureka CNC fairings on them. I added a little bit on the top and the bottom. Of course, the fairings here, I went a little bit crazy just to have fun. That's those with the Matco W50LT Lima Tango as far as the brakes and the wheels. On the nose, I have the landing light right here. Here's a shot of that with the tape off. Then, because this is set at about 11 to 12 degrees angle down full time, I do have a drop down taxi light. I will have to work this a little bit. This gap was a little bit off. I didn't do my due diligence when I was finishing the bottom of the nose. Should have paid a little bit more attention to that. So. Got a little bit of fairing work to, to deal with that. 
but this will drop down 90 degrees basically point straight ahead this is marco's machined rubber bumper that looks fantastic it's actually an airfoil shape and then if you can see here is the fairing for the nose gear strut and then i do have the gear doors i will show this opening in just a second and then something that's kind of unique i guess to this bird is with my grt hxr ephus i have the capability to run video this is actually a wide angle video camera and i will not this is just mocked up right now i'll mount it once i have the ephus hooked up and i can get that camera angle uh nice and um you know spot on and then i'll mount this here's a shot there of the closed gear and the doors again this is the willemson uh, nose gear actuator and then back here you have the landing brake i am using pretty much for the hardware on this entire bird the mike melville 5 8 inch long 10 30 second stainless steel uh, hex top smooth um, screws they look pretty nice and that's what i have uh, for the most part on this ram air scoop this is just under three inches at the top here and then it flows back and then it actually starts curving down right in here it does a very shallow s curve into that red can in the back that's a rod bower ram air can i'll explain that a little bit later this right here kind of infinity looking figure eight looking thing that is the laser altimeter for the automatic extension system that was tweaked to have more parameters by mark zeitland right up here center line on the aft end of the ram air scoop is uh, a NACA scoop that goes back through here into the engine compartment and then it, it splits into with a Y half going to the mechanical fuel pump to cool it and the other half going to the P mag so I know I've already showed this opening and closing of the nose gear before when I finally got the geometry right on the spring and then I went to shoot this part again and lo and behold, it took me about three hours. I realized that the right hinge, which is this one on the, the nose wheel doors, had some gunk or something in there. I think it probably got some epoxy in there. It took quite a while to, to kind of get it loosened up so that the spring geometry and, and I also did about four or five rounds of trimming a little bit of the spring off but it seems to be working now and of course when you get everything perfect and then you add paint and, and finish and all that it seems to jack things up sometimes so I'm gonna go ahead and cycle this <laughs> now I will point out on my nose gear strut fairing right here you'll see there's a pair of springs here a pair of springs here so this isn't actually glass to the strut like I know a lot of folks do and then that allows this to free float now there is just a tad bit of oil canning in the center here and just a tiny bit here when it closes but nothing that's remarkable and then I do have two screws that hard uh, mount this fairing to the actual NG5. And then again, here's a look. Now, I only have these temporarily mounted right now. I do have to do some work as far as painting. And then I've got to do a little bit of work on this uh, finish work on that fairing. That's why uh, these are just temporarily mounted. Okay, now we'll go ahead and close this. Put the gear in the up position. And that's the gear.
And here's another repeat with the landing brake. But again, this time it's actually finished the paint. So I'll show you this quickly. As you can see, I put a little bit of bling on the landing brake. Just thought I'd spruce it up and have some fun. I do need to do a couple touch-ups around the blue on the edge on one on each side. I had a couple of egregious runs. Now we'll put this sucker down, see how she does. And that's it for the landing brake. Thankfully everything is functioning as designing so far. Moving on to the Ram air scoop. Here you can see I've taken out the 12 screws and the two cam locks. I have a little hardware card that I put them in. The only tools required is a 1 8 inch hex wrench and a regular number two Phillips. With the interference fit on both the main Ram air scoop and then also the NACA scoop tube to remove this Ram air scoop, just simply grab it, lift it a little bit up on the front, wiggle it. The Ram air scoop uh, releases, it's an interference fit. And then the only thing left is this little NACA scoop, just wiggled out a little bit, it comes right off. To get it back on, it's just reverse order. You just got to get the NACA scoop tube lined up first, and then it's just in reverse order. Goes right on. Put the four cam locks in, 12 screws, you're ready to go. Since I didn't point this out earlier, I'll note that on the belly of my bird, here and here, I have two separate fuel drains. That's because I have an internal thigh support. Some, and then in the actual hell hole, probably the first major visible thing that you'll note is Bully's oil pump for the oil heat system. That's based on Nick Ugolini's system that utilizes pressure to compensate for the fact that our long easies are very leaky birds. I'll note that the oil heat system, it draws oil from the engine, but it does have a fail safe in that the draw pipe is actually, it's a stand pipe so that you can never run the engine down lower than three quarts of oil. This black material in here, that is sound deadening material. Total on the back seat of, or on the back of the guy in back seat, it's just a few ounces. And I, I put that in there. I actually had to reapply it using some 3M 77 spray glue because the sticky pad from the original stuff didn't really stick that well. Here you can see the main Ram air scoop. So this is set up so that it has the total of 11 degrees. It takes the speed and the velocity of the air coming in and it transforms it into pressure and it sends it to this guy right here, which I'll get into in just a minute. That's the Rod Bauer Ram Air can. And that's kind of the backbone of this whole entire Ram Air system. Up here, you can see that this is the intake right here for the NACA scoop on the bottom of the Ram Air scoop. And that goes through this scat tubing right here and then this will Y and one will go to the mechanical fuel pump and the other scat tubing will go up to cool down the PMAG in its operation. So looking aft in the hell hole, here you have the main ram air scoop and then of course you have the little NACA scoop cooling tube right there. Now it's kind of hard to see in here, I tried to put a backlight in there and this butterfly valve isn't working exactly because of the current configuration, but there's a butterfly valve right there that puts this whole ram air system into one of two states. If this butterfly valve is open, then it's the whole system is, is in a ram air state. The air comes in through the front of the ram air scoop. It goes through here. It bypasses, if you can see in there, there's a can and filter. I'll show it from the other side here in a second. And then it goes straight into the fuel injection servo and then picks up, uh, you know, it's metered there. And then of course it is fuel injected though. It goes into a cold air plenum 
and then is distributed to the various cylinders. So that's the ram air system from this side. If that butterfly valve is closed, then air is drawn in through these three reed valves, if you will, and then that pulls the air in through this circular key and filter. Clearly, when the air is coming in via ram air, the pressure closes these valves because it pushes them out. So again, you have one of two systems. You're either having air come straight through that's pressurized, and that gives you about one, according to Rod Bauer, gives you about one inch increase in your manifold pressure. He calls it the poor man's turbocharger. So this would hook up right here to a three inch skeet tube that goes right into the face of the fuel injection servo. So again, this is the ram air system, one of two operations. The wiring is pretty much complete. I'm about 95%. I think I may have two ground wires that I need to run at the moment. The other significant component in the hell hole is this guy right over here and that is a laser altimeter and that is the final piece of four conditions that must be met for um, Mark Zeitlin's automatic gear extension system and so that will fire off about 380 to 400 feet and if you forget to put your gear down, it'll automatically throw your gear down. So that's pretty much it for the hellhole. And that's pretty much it for this update. Hey, thanks for watching. Cheers.